Welcome back to my short video tutorials. In my uh, previous tutorials, we finished the analysis of standard pre-processing workflow. So now we can perform linear dimensional reduction by running the function of run uh, PCA. So uh, PCA is the abbreviation of principal component analysis. The purpose of uh, this function is to obtain lower dimensional data. Later we can select a PC to cluster the cells. So uh, PCA uh, is the process of computing uh, principal component and it is uh, commonly used for a uh, dimensionality reduction method by projecting uh, each data point uh, onto only the first few principal components. So by default, it runs 50 PCs for the 2000 variable features that we identified in previous uh, analysis with the function of find variable features. So following the run, uh, it prints out the uh, first 30 uh, positive genes and the first 30 negative genes for uh, PC1 to PC5. You can see here PC1 to uh, PC5. So, uh, Surat has several uh, useful ways to visualize both cells and the features that define the PCA, including uh, dim plot, width dim reduction, and uh, dim heat map. So, uh, dim plot probably makes more sense to us because uh, we want to see cell clusters. So let's use dim plot and the plot the PC1 and the PC2. So let's zoom in. So you can see a cell embedding with the reduction method of PCA. We can also open uh, the uh, PC1 and the PC10. So uh, you can see cell embedding with the reduction measured uh, for PC1 and the PC10. The cell cluster looks different as the uh, PC1 and the PC2. We can also uh, plot PC1 and PC50. So you can see uh, the cell embeddings are different from PC1, PC2, or PC1 and uh, PC10. Normally, the top principal components rep represent a robust compression of the data. So we need to uh, decide which pieces to uh, include for further downstream analysis. So uh, throughout tutorials demonstrated uh, two methods to identify significant uh, PC for downstream analysis. One is the uh, Jack's draw uh, function and the other one is the elbow plot function. So uh, the elbow plot function um, is a more straightforward function to use. So it is easier for researchers to understand it because uh, the elbow often corresponds well to the significant pieces 
So it is also much faster to run than uh, Jack Straw function. So for uh, today's demonstration, I only show you the commonly used uh, elbow plot. So uh, you can try the Jack Straw function later. So when we run elbow plot by default, uh, it only run the first uh, 20 PCs. So uh, now the sudden drop at PC5 in this uh, um, data set, which makes uh, the elbow shape is less than obviously. But uh, you can try to identify where the elbow is. So let's zoom in. So uh, I would say it is at PC9. So suggesting that the majority of true signal was captured in the first uh, 10 PCs. So let's run uh, the elbow plot for 50 PCs. So we can zoom in again. So you can see uh, the elbow shape is the same as the 20. Uh, it's around the PC9. Generally speaking, you should include all pieces up to uh, the elbow shape for cell uh, clustering. But you always can try it to include um, higher pieces to see how the cell canast looks like later. So let's use uh, uh, the first uh, 20 PC to canast the cells. So uh, through that, use uh, uh, a graph-based canastering approach to canast the cells. So we uh, so we need to construct a graph first. So this is done by the uh, find neighbor function. So uh, in the find neighbor function, um, we tell the computer that we will use 20 PCs. So uh, find the neighbor's function takes the first 20 PCs as the input uh, from previously defined dimensionality by run PCA. Let's run uh, find the neighbors. So uh, in this step, find edges were drawn between cells with uh, similar uh, features expression pattern. So next, we apply uh, the find cluster function to cluster the cells. So uh, let's run this function. So you can see the default technique, uh, no one algorithm was used in our analysis. So the find the cluster function contain a resolution um, parameter. So when we use resolution 0 0.1, you can see we got uh, uh, 11 cell clusters in this data set. So let's try to increase the resolution to 0 0.3. So following the run, you can see now we have uh, 18 cell cluster in the data set. So finally, we can use non-linear dimensional reduction technique such as UMAP, TSNI, uh, 
to place similar cells together in lower dimensional space. So let's run run a uh, UMAP. So Surat uh, suggests that uh, if you use uh, uh, 20 pieces for uh, the function find the neighbors, uh, you use the same uh, pieces to run your map. So following uh, the run, we can use uh, the function of dim plot to visualize cells. So now we can change the uh, reduction method from PCA to a uh, UMAP. So this is the most exciting uh, moment for me to do the analysis because uh, we are going to see the uh, cell clusters. Let's run the plot. Then we can zoom in. Because we uh, run the resolution 0 0.3, so you can see we got uh, 18 cell cluster in this data set. So if you prefer to use TSNI, you can uh, run TSNI. Yeah, it takes longer than the function of run you map. Okay, so we finish the run for TSNI. So we can use dim plot to visualize the cell cluster again. Now we change the reduction method to TSNI. Let's run the dim plot. So we got cell cluster down here. We can zoom in again to have a look at the cell clusters. So uh, the cell clusters looks uh, different as the U map. But uh, uh, when we do later analysis, we will find they are the same population uh, cells. Uh, you can see we still got an 18 cell cluster here. So now let's have a look at our object. You can see now we added three uh, dimensional um, reduction analysis uh, into our object, PCA, UMAP, and the TSNI. Um, we have eight commands in the command list. So in this video, we run the run PCA, find the neighbors, find the uh, clusters, run UMAP, and uh, run TSNI. So we can connote uh, the windows now. Now let's uh, save the object again for further analysis.